What up my nugs? Today we are going to be sorting Dubia roaches. This is something I've been putting off for a little bit now and you know, I figured if I have to suffer through doing this, I feel like you guys gotta suffer through it too. Oh, what? Oh, that's not the line. What? What's the line then? Oh, all right, here, let, let, let's do it over. Today I thought I'd talk a little about, you know, how to set up a Dubia colony, what are the exact numbers you need to make a colony grow, you know, the number of males versus the number of females, proper care technique for these guys, and then just a few little tips and tricks along the way. So, with all that being said, let's roll the intro. Kicking this off, we are going to be talking about the males versus the females. How many do you need? Personally, for me, I am doing one male for every three females. So if you have a hundred females, you would want 30 males. So on and so forth. I need to sort these bins and then we'll get the proper measurements and then we're going to put them all in a bin. So enjoy the montage. Alright, we finished that part. Now we have all these nice cups filled with roaches in a 1 to 3 ratio. If you guys are wondering why I choose the 1 to 3 ratio, I feel like this gives enough for one male to at least get a couple of females in to make sure that everyone's getting fertilized, everyone's laying eggs to get my roaches, and to the point where there's not too many males. If you have too many males, the males will start to try to fight each other instead of breeding our females. And we don't care about dudes fighting, we care about getting roach babies to feed our little lizards, so don't want that. That. Personally, the 1 to 3 method works for me. I've seen people go as far as 1 to 5. Uh, I haven't personally tried it, but I've heard if it works. You want to make sure you have at least a couple males in there. I really wouldn't do more than 5 just because of the fact then there could be a chance of females not being fertilized by males and then you're just missing out on that female laying eggs. So 1 to 3, the dudes get the job done, the gals lay the roaches, and you get to feed your hungry lizard. Moving on. All right, moving on, let's get into how the enclosure should look. So, don't follow what I'm doing, because I'm not doing it right. However, I'm too lazy to switch it. You can notice that I'm using a clear bin by the B-roll I'm filming, because I don't feel like lifting this up to show you. Uh, this is a clear bin. A darker bin or solid color bin will work a lot better for you. Um, that way, the roaches, so the three three of roaches really like humidity, heat, darkness. You're gonna find these are gonna be the best ways to get them to breed. Uh, I am skipping one of those methods by not uh, having this uh, as a solid bin. Uh, maybe one day I'll paint it or cover it with paper. Who knows? But for now, I'm not doing that. Part two of the explanation. So, what you want to fill with the bin is obviously you don't want it this messy. Again, too lazy to clean. I gotta film and do this at the same time. What? What do you? What, who do you think I am? Superman? I'm getting all this shit done today. So, here's what you should do. Have a nice, clean, solid bin. Make it look real nice, real fancy. Not too fancy. You know, these are just roaches. They don't really need the big digs, but just enough to get them to go by. Pretty much what you need is going to be on the inside. I prefer to do no loose substrate, like dirt, anything like that, just because it's harder to get babies out, blah, blah, blah. You can use substrate if you want to. It helps with humidity. However, if you have, if you by chance own a reptile building and have 30 plus 50 animals in here, you'll know that humidity in your building stays fairly high, so you don't need to add anything to your roach bins. However, if you're not one of those people, there are a couple of other things. We'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, pretty much all else you need is I just use egg crate. Uh, again, don't follow my lead. You want to fill it all the way. I ran out of egg crate and this egg crate's dirty. I need to switch it out. I just haven't ordered new ones yet. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll probably put some b-roll in here of how I feed them. It's basically just a plate right on top with the food. I don't like putting it on the bottom because as you can see it gets dirty. The roaches like fuck around with it. Uh, so I like putting it straight on top with the water gel and we'll get into the husbandry a little later. But the plate's on top. They eat it. Then I just got to remove it and put a new plate. Good to go. Moving on. Oh boy, it's time to pour all the roaches. Hey, hey, know your place.
Alrighty, now that you've separated your roaches into proper ratio of 1 to 3 to 1 to 5, you got your bin all set up and you didn't follow Dakota's rules on how he's doing it because teach, listen, what, what's the saying? Shit, uh, teach as I say, not as I do. Do, no, no, do as I say, not as I do. Do that. All right, so now we got everyone set up, we're gonna wanna learn a little bit about the husbandry care of the roach. How do I take care of these? How do I get them to breed? How do I get them to breed wicked fast, super fast, mock speed, 10,000 roaches in under two months? Hit the like button, subscribe if you wanna know how to do it. Plot twist, you don't. You, I just get an, an extra subscriber until you wise up and unsubscribe. Let's get back to the video. General husbandry for roaches is fairly easy. I like to use heat tape plugged into a thermostat. I think that that's Husbandry for roaches is fairly easy. Uh, for heating, I just like to use heat tape plugged into a thermostat. I thought that, why can't I talk? Why can I not talk? Set the thermostat to around 93 degrees, which means the bin is gonna be around 90. You want an 85 to 90 degree hotspot in order for them to reproduce, breed, wanna breed, make babies, blah, blah, blah. For food, I use a variety of different vegetables, sweet potatoes, oranges, carrots, uh, dandelion greens, apples, etc., etc., etc. I also like to use some high-grade dog food as well, maybe some chicken food or chick feed as well to get some proteins in there. Uh, just to note, these are only going for my breeder bin, so if you are using a feeder bin, which I personally use different, do you want to feed a lot less of the citrus fruits, such as lemons, limes, oranges, etc.? They're not very good. They're going to have too much of the uh, sephoric acid. I can't remember. It was some type of acid that's going to be in the roast so when your reptile eats it, it, it's not very good for it. So I only do these for the breeders and when they go in the feeders, they get basically just greens and a little bit of protein. I really just use oranges because it's a great hydrating factor and also, I don't know, it, it, it might just be uh, just a placebo effect, but I'm like, when they eat oranges, they breed faster. Uh, that might just be total bullshit that I just convinced myself of, or it might be facts. I'm too lazy to check, so you do it at your own expense. Moving on to hydration now. With roaches, I find the easiest way to hydrate them is just getting the water gels. I can get them any big, you know, Home Depot, any of the garden sections are gonna have them. They find them in reptile places too. When I order my crickets through rainbow mealworms, I also usually get a pound of their water crystals. They work great. They're super easy. They are reusable. If they dry out, you just gotta put some, mist some water in them and they bulk right back up. Um, some other methods I have seen is using a sponge, using a wet paper towel, a shallow bowl of water. I don't really recommend the shallow bowl of water because they do have a risk of drowning and when you can just pay like 10 bucks for water crystals that last you a wicked long time. I don't, I don't really see the risk of, you know, doing in all those other methods. I found paper towels and sponges dry out a lot quicker than the water crystals, so just my advice. Take it or leave it. Uh, you'll probably take it because that's why you're actually watching this video, but moving on. Final thoughts, tips, and tricks. Uh, how long do they usually take to reproduce? You wanna leave your breeder bin alone for at least six to eight months to get at least one to two generations of roaches going. So how many roaches you get is how many that is multiplied by the number of eggs that they lay, which was resulting in the second generation. So it's like double to triple. So you're gonna have a lot of babies if you just keep, honestly, I like to keep mine by pretty much eight to eight months to a year. Just leave it alone. You'll really have like a thriving colony. With the amount of roaches I have in here, if I literally leave this alone until mid 2021, um, I'll probably, have thousands and thousands of babies ready so always a good idea to do that which is why I have a separate feeding bin which will usually just take a few nymphs throw them in there I have a I think five male I have five extra males so I'm just gonna throw them in there actually I'll probably just feed these to the Chinese water dragon but I think that is all you need to know. Any other helpful tips or hints? Let me think for a second. If you order your roaches online, buy some domesticated beetles. I think that's how you pronounce it. They have a very good symbiotic relationship between doobie roaches and they help break down any of this. Well, all the junk you see in here, if I had to miss der derma dermatitis? No, they don't, they're not der dermis. These beetles right here, uh, I do have them in my lobster roach and my red runner roach colonies. I just don't have them in my dubias. I kind of neglected my dubia roach colony because they breed so fucking slow. And now I had two bins that were like two full breeder bins and they've been diminished into one colony. So don't forget about your roaches. I guess that's the biggest tip of all. Don't neglect them because if you do, you'll, you'll bite yourself in the foot for spending $70 and then waiting a year for nymphs to grow into adults just for you to neglect them and half of them die. Don't do that. Alrighty folks, and there you have it. Some tips and tricks and how to set up a doobie colony so it will thrive. Let me know how I did. Was this probably the best doobie roach video you've ever seen? Or was it the worst? I'll never know unless you tell me right there in the comment section or using by the like to dislike ratio bar button thing down there as well.
where the subscribe button is also. Outro time. Like the video, please feel free to give us a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of my animals or my brain and products, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, DVCB Exotics. We're also on TikTok. Like some cool merch like this bad boy right here. That's pretty rad. There's that shirt in a little better vision. You also can get this shirt and that shirt right down there in teespring.com slash DVCB Exotics, where we also have Patreon, patreon.com slash DVCB Exotics, where you get premium content such as first look at the animals and the pictures I take of my animals before anyone else gets to see them, first dibs on some animals I get and the animals I produce, you also get up-to-date updates on all my breeding projects. I have hella breeding projects, a lot of stuff. I, I have an entire reptile building because of it. That's about it. A low is $1 a month. There's some other perks in there. If you want to check them out, it's right down there as well. That's going to wrap it up for today. Take it away. Outro. Outro.